Today I'm going to walk you through the process of how I make ornaments in watercolor. Um, I'm using wood slice ornaments and you're going to see here that some are just not suitable for watercolor because of the amount of water that we use. This thin one split on me and actually most of the ones from this um, batch split on me. And I'm going to give you a little very brief rundown of what type of wood slice ornament you want to purchase in order to prevent that splitting. So the first batch is this one that came in a plastic bag and I ordered that one off of Amazon. Um, those are the ones that split on me. The second batch was gifted to me from Arteza. And you can see here just how thick those wood slices are. So when you're looking to watercolor on wood slices, you want to make sure to get ones as thick as possible. The difference between the two was quite astonishing. The cheap Amazon ones are more suitable for a non-wet medium. So you're looking at things um, such as markers or heavy acrylic. If you want to use watercolor, I would suggest that you go with a brand such as Arteza's, which have thick wood slices. The Arteza wood slices are already pre-sanded, but you may just want to wipe it off either with a cloth or with your finger just to get rid of, um, any, of any particles that may remain on top of the wood. You're going to go in with a pretty wet wash of water, which is why having a thicker wood slice is handy. Too much water in the thinner wood slices causes them to crack as they are drying. Wet the entire middle area of the wood slice. I usually wet it up until the very last visible ring. Make sure that it is fully saturated. And then you can go in with your watercolor. The main thing, the main difference between painting on wood as opposed to painting on watercolor is that you're not going to get as nice of a blend between the two, the two colors. So what you're going to be doing is working in layers and you're just going to add the colors next to each other, um, overlapping a bit if possible during the first layer. But what you're going to see is that you're going to have blocks of color on your wood slice ornament. And we'll remedy that uh, when we go in with our second layer. So for the first layer, just lay down blocks of color. You want to make sure that your brush is thoroughly saturated with water. Otherwise, the paint will not move. It'll just stick on top and your brush will rub up against the wood of the ornament. Continue adding color in blocks across the entire surface of the wood slice ornament. Every time you go in with a new color, make sure to add more water to your brush. For the second layer, I work as I usually work with my regular watercolor pieces. I don't always put the exact same color on top. Um, I usually just alternate colors randomly. And this gives me um, a, a nicer blend on the paper. So I'm going to do that same thing on my ornament. So as you can see here, I'm putting blue on top of green and purple on top of blue, and that just gives me a nicer blend of the colors. You won't be able to see as much blockiness as you had before. So for the second layer, we're just concentrating on saturating the ornament a little bit more and getting the colors to blend as much as possible by alternating them on top of the first layer. Thank you. 
For the third layer, we are going to concentrate on getting a bit more color within the rings of the wood slice. You are not going to get it as fully saturated with colors as the areas that are adjacent to it. But we are going to try to give it as much color as possible so that you don't have um, quite a contrast um, in those rings. So for this third layer, try to concentrate as much of that color as possible along the rings of your wood slice. And if you can't get it any darker than it is, that's okay. Try not to worry too much about it. Um, it just gives the ornament a little bit more character. And as you can see, we're adding quite a bit of water. That's why it's essential when working with watercolor on wood slices that you get as thick a slice as possible. If you go with a thinner slice, all of this water is going to cause your slice to crack. After you've laid down three layers, I wouldn't suggest um, having any more than three layers, otherwise you will get the piece too saturated with water and it will take a lot longer to dry. Allow your piece to dry thoroughly for about um, one to two hours before moving on to the next part. For the mountain range, I'm going to be using Copic Opaque White. And Copic Opaque White is sort of a, a mix between an ink and a watercolor, and it gives me the brightest white possible. Before you start, you want to make sure that your ornament is facing the correct way uh, with the hole on top. And we are going to start by adding some mountain ranges. Um, usually when I start with the mountain ranges, I only add the outline of it first, and then I fill it in. Um, if you can see here, I didn't let this ornament fully dry for the purposes of this tutorial, but you will not get as much bleeding of color onto the white if you let your ornament fully dry. I am going to continue filling in the bottom part of the mountain range, making sure to clean my brush off in between strokes so that I don't drag any of the watercolor into the white. Sometimes it's inevitable and that's okay as well. Um, you can leave it as that or you can allow this layer to dry and then uh, give it another pass through with the Copic Opaque White and, um, and you'll be able to get a, a more brilliant white. You don't necessarily need to use this sort of white. You can use any white you have. You can use acrylic. You can use um, Dr. P.H. Martin's. You can use a white gel pen to achieve the same effect. As you can see here, um, as I'm adding another little peak to the mountain, I didn't allow the wood slice to fully dry and uh, the mountain is bleeding into um, the background. I try to fix it and I think I did a fairly good job of it <laughs> for this one. Um, but, you know, you can just avoid that altogether by letting it, letting it dry. Now I'm going back in with a second pass of the white in order to brighten the mountains and, um, and get rid of some of the watercolor that has seeped through. While the mountains are drying, I am going to go in with a white gel pen. For this one, I am using the Uniball Signal White Gel Pen. 
and I'm going to begin adding stars to the sky. And in order to add the stars, all I'm doing is um, dotting them on with the tip of the pen right onto the ornament. Once I am satisfied with the amount of stars that I have added, I'd like to add just one um, glowing star into the sky. So to do that, I am going to make a cross with my pen and I'm going to add a little diamond in the middle and fill that in. And that gives it the effect of a, a large glowing star in the sky. If you pick up some of the color underneath, just allow it to dry a little and go over it one more time with your gel pen. We're going to let this piece fully dry for about 20 minutes to half an hour um, before going in and adding some details to the mountain. For the details, I am adding um, a watercolor shimmer. And these shimmers are from my own line of watercolors, the Sprout Creative. There are details in the description box below. This particular shimmer is called Looking Glass, and it is a silver with sort of a rose undertone to it. So in order to do this, I'm looking at every peak and every valley in the mountain range, and I am adding a triangle or a little block of color a little block of shimmer in between those peaks and valleys. And if you want more details on how I achieve this or, or where the shadows go, I have a class on that that I recently published um, and I will link it in the little description above or below. Finally, I'm going to take that same color and add a little bit of uh, pizzazz to the sky. So we're adding a, a few stars in that same shimmery color to the sky. Allow your piece to fully dry before moving on to the next step. I suggest that you leave your pieces out overnight in order for all of the water to evaporate from your wood slices. Um, if you are not able to wait overnight, I say leave it between uh, two to three hours um, to make sure that it is 100% fully dry before we seal our pieces. Now sealing your piece is very important because this is watercolor. So if any water or moisture or humidity falls on your wood slice, then it will damage your piece. So I'm going to be using Mod Podge Clear Acrylic Sealer. You're going to spray your pieces, um, the instructions say about eight to 10 inches away, and give it one nice thin layer of the sealer. Let it dry for about 10 to 15 minutes and then give it another coat. So that's how I make my wood slice ornaments. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you want to see more tutorials, make sure that you uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, I will be adding more as the weeks progress.